Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Philip. I'm Julia Michener, one of the priests at the Cathedral. I'm so glad you could join in this midday meditation. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Here ends the reading. My seven-year-old daughter, Margaret, is a cloud watcher. She spends a lot of time looking at clouds. She stares at them for a while and then she reports on what she sees. Things that appear to the rest of our family simply as signs of an approaching storm look to our daughter like they could be giant kittens, bunny rabbits, ice cream cones, or of course, her beloved unicorns. I'm delighted by Margaret's hobby, not only because it was something I myself enjoyed as a child, but also, also because I believe this fanciful activity actually has the potential to further her development as a follower of Jesus. What do you mean, you might ask? What do you mean? simply this, that much of the work of following Jesus is about learning to see things differently. Much of the work of following Jesus is about learning to see things differently. Much of the work of following Jesus is about recognizing and then altering our human tendency to look at the world around us through a lens that is far too narrow. The gospel reading appointed for today tells the story of the calling of Matthew, the tax collector. You probably know something about how tax collectors were seen in Jesus's time. People viewed them as thieves and cheaters because of the extra fees they charged and then used to line their own pockets. This explains the shock some of the professional religious folks feel when they observe Jesus sitting down to supper with Matthew and his colleagues. Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? They ask his followers, to which Jesus responds. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. One of the things Jesus is doing here is looking beyond the narrow visions that have bound Matthew and his colleagues in the eyes of others, visions that have caused them to be written off, cast out, even demonized by their peers. What Jesus is doing here is seeing Matthew, not just as he seems to be, namely yet another greedy, capitulating agent of an oppressive government. What Jesus is doing here is not 
seeing Matthew just as he seems to be, but also as he might be, namely a repentant, self-sacrificing servant of a loving and merciful God. Jesus is seeing Matthew not as just he seems as he seems to be, but as he might be. And so Jesus calls him. Jesus calls Matthew the tax collector to become Matthew the disciple. Jesus shows Matthew his truest, deepest self, and then he empowers him to live into that image. Just as importantly, Jesus shows others who he believes Matthew can be, not a man for himself, but a man for others. Well, what a story for our day. What a story, what a challenge for our time. For surely, surely, if there is anything we especially need in our society right now, it is this ability to see things and one another differently than we so often do. What we especially need right now is the ability to use our social and our spiritual imagination to look beyond our biases and assumptions. To be able to see past the current ugliness and meanness and sickness and division infecting our society so that we might catch a glimpse of the work of transformation that God is doing even and especially in the midst of these incredibly trying times. There's a lot that's hard to look at these days. There's a lot to, that's hard to look at. Images of COVID patients struggling to draw breath in overcrowded ICUs. Images of black men struggling to draw breath in a police officers chokehold, images of protesters and counter protesters screaming at each other and sometimes becoming violent, images of families lined up outside food pantries due to the ever-growing numbers of unemployment. There's a lot that's hard to look at these days. It's easy to turn away from what we would rather not see. It's easy to turn away from people who challenge us and our worldview. It's easy to turn away and not look at that which angers us, frightens us, threatens us. It's easy to assume that we already know how certain stories are going to end. But today's scripture reading from the Gospel of Matthew, today's scripture reading makes clear that looking, and not just looking, but truly seeing, this is gospel work. This is gospel work. I have come not to call the righteous, Jesus says, but sinners. What appears at first glance to be inevitable and unchangeable Sickness, enmity, estrangement, dis-ease, sin. This is not all there is. This is not the end of the story. Even in situations that seem hopeless, there are possibilities beyond our wildest dreams. Even in people who seem beyond redemption, even in places that seem broken beyond repair, there is the chance for transformation, radical transformation. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel famously asks Philip when Philip tells him he has found the Messiah, the Christ, in the most unlikely of places. To which Philip replies, come and see, come and see. Which of course is precisely what Jesus does when he calls Matthew, and indeed when he calls us. He comes and sees. He sees Matthew, and he sees us and the whole world, not just as we are, but as we might be. He sees us not just as others may see us, but as God sees us. 
in turn, he asked us, he asked us to do the same. He asked us when we look around at this fragile earth, our island home, he asked us to see not just the fragility, but the strength, not just the violence, but the tenderness, not just the hatred, but the love, not just the doors being closed, but the hearts and minds being opened. Not just that which has grown old, but that which is being made new. This may at times seem a fanciful endeavor, a pipe dream, one that is about as rational as imagining that the fluff of cloud on a hot July day is actually a piece of cotton candy. Unlike my daughter's cloud watching though, looking at people and situations and truly seeing them, seeing their beauty and their belovedness, seeing the parts of them that all appearances to the contrary still can bend towards justice and peace and freedom. This is not just a game to help while away a summer afternoon. On the contrary, on the contrary, it is vital work for the summoning of our courage. It is vital work for the healing of this nation and of our world. It is vital work for loving our neighbors in these days of division. It is vital work. Indeed, some of the most important work we may ever do. And now, let us pray together in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I now invite your own prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.